Welcome back to the All Things Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Vic Lopez, as always. And today, I'm going to be doing something a little bit differently from the last videos I've done. This video is really going to be aimed at the Dallas Mavericks, off-season moves, and just what I think about what they've been doing, right? Do I think they've improved? What do I think about their off-season, essentially? Uh, these videos are going to be relatively quick. I'm going to be showing you guys some clips as I talk about these off-season moves. And hopefully you guys enjoy this mini video series or whatever you want to call it. And yeah, let's get right into it. 24th in defensive rating last season, 30th in rebounding. So clearly that's something that they definitely were looking to improve. It does seem like they've addressed two of those things. Um, and obviously they were a very good offensive team, right? From, from an offensive rating standpoint, they didn't really have trouble scoring the ball. It was really the defense that was a big problem. Uh, obviously energy, positional versatility, just a way to kind of offset the defensive liabilities from Kyrie and Luka mainly, right? So I'll move on with draft night, the Mavericks and the Thunder, make a quick little trade, right? Between the number 10 and 12 pick, the Mavericks draft Derek Lively and getting Derek Lively is clearly uh, a move to address their rim protection, energy, right? Defensive versatility. We don't know what offensive potential he may have. Hopefully, the Mavericks can untap some of that. We also move on to Seth Curry, right? He agrees to a two-year deal. He's a career 43% three-point shooter. More spacing for Luka and Kyrie to operate is clearly what he's going to be bringing. The question is, how long will that three-man combination be out there on the floor because of the obvious defensive liability, right? You're adding Seth Curry out there. I don't know in what lineups he's going to be. I'm sure... They're going to try to run a little bit of Kyrie, Luka, Seth, right? Maybe, right? I'm not sure if that's sustainable uh, for long periods of time, but only time will tell. Uh, this one was strange. Uh, Dante Exum, he agrees to a one-year deal. One of the stranger signings in this offseason hasn't played since 2020. He, at the time, he was known for his defense, and the Mavs are clearly banking on the potential of 3 and D. Right. Since recently, what I looked up was he's averaging 38.8% from three overseas, playing for KK Partisan. Not even sure how to say that team name. Uh, but the problem is there's already a lot of guards on this team. You know, Josh Green, Jaden Hardy, Kyrie and Luca, obviously. So it's an interesting signing, uh, clearly banking on some depth, right? Maybe some defense, right? Like I said, some three and D potential right if he does find his shot which was something that he really struggled with in his short time in the NBA uh, another interesting move was the trade with the Kings right for Rashawn Holmes and also acquiring Olivier Maxence Prosper Kings stopped using Rashawn Holmes so it's interesting to see what the Mavs do with him he's definitely a serviceable big right kind of you know energy guy that can fill a much needed role on the Mavs right defensively just like another guy that can kind of do some dirty work um, not exactly sure why he lost his role with the Kings I thought he was pretty useful um, I guess offensively he kind of takes a hit so that's probably why the Mavs kind of or probably why the Kings kind of took away his minutes not exactly sure clearly they made the right decision, I guess, because obviously the number one offensive rating, I think in NBA history at the time, uh, was what the Kings did last season. So, you know, and obviously locking down a very high seed. So, you know, clearly they found the right pieces. They made the right moves for themselves. Uh, a little bit on Olivier Maxence Prosper. There's a link to the interview in the description if you kind of want to get to know him a little bit. He does like a pretty cool interview. There's a couple of these for the Dallas Mavericks. Wing player, great defensive ability, also has the positional versatility that the Mavs desperately need for multiple lineups. Three seasons in college, solid improvement each season, as you can see on these stat lines. Obviously, the the big signing, right, or return, rather, was the Kyrie Irving three-year deal, right? Mavs kind of had no choice. Um, you know, they couldn't afford to let him walk for nothing, especially what they gave up to get Kyrie. A lot of people didn't like the move myself included, wasn't a fan of the trade for Kyrie. Um, I expect a trade down the line, maybe as soon as the trade deadline, right? This upcoming season, if things look the same as they did from last year, and you know, only time will tell. Dwight Powell returns on a three-year deal, keeping some continuity on this team. He's been on the Mavs forever. 
Um, he serves as Luca's rim runner on pick and rolls. Knows his role, doesn't play outside of it. If I think it was a good move, right? Keeping some chemistry on this team that desperately needs any kind of continuity they can get. A really good signing. This was a sign and trade, right, with the Celtics. Grant Williams, weirdly, lost a lot of playing time under Joe Masula over time. He struggled with his shooting at times, but wrongly took the blame from the Celtics fans and casual fans for the Celtics' disappointing playoff run. This is a guy that can oddly fill multiple positions at 6'6", plays tough on anyone you match him up with on defense, a lot of relevant basketball. He's been to the finals, obviously. He shot 45% from three in the playoffs last season. Great pickup by the Mavs who gave up Reggie Bullock and three second round picks essentially to get him. I think that obviously when you're in win now mode, those are the kind of moves you're going to have to make. And I think that Grant Williams is going to bring a lot to this team. I actually really like what this team is looking like compared to last season. So could be some optimism for Mavs fans, right? I think that those are some really good moves. Summary for the Mavs. They've addressed the need for positional versatility along with rim protection and energy. They've brought some additional experience along with elite three-point shooting. The question that remains is, will this roster restructuring help the Luka Kyrie combo succeed? Only time will tell. This is the All Things Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Vic Lopez, as always. I'll catch you guys on the next one.